just a minute to come in from the waiting room. Good afternoon. This is the hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Tuesday, February 23rd. Today's hearing is being conducted pursuant to certain temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. This hearing is being recorded and will be posted to the city of Boston's website. Before I review some procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Good afternoon. My name is Kathleen Joyce. I'm chair of the licensing board. Thank you for joining us today. I am joined um, by today by Commissioner Liam Curran and Commissioner Kiana Saxon. Thank you. As a reminder, please mute yourself unless you are uh, testifying before the board. Please turn on both your video and your audio as I will need the video to swear you in. I will read each item into the agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the licensee, who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department, and then whether there are any other individuals with personal knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify. After that, all parties will be sworn in. The police report will be then read into the record, after which the licensee will have the opportunity to make a statement for questions from the chairwoman and the commissioners. Calling CHSP TRS Boston 2 LLC. The license premise is 1 Avenue de Lafayette. The date of the license premise inspection was January 11th, 2021. Date of alleged incident, January 3rd, 2021, prostitution on license premise. Date of alleged incident, August 11th, 2020, armed robbery on license premise. Is the licensee present? The licensee is present. Uh, Attorney Bill Kelly representing the license holder. Also present on the call is the general manager and the license manager of the license holder, Greg Namora. Greg, if, if you could raise your hand to signify your presence. Thank you. Who on behalf of the Boston Police Department will be testifying today? Detective Hernandez. Are there any other individuals with personal knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify today? Sergeant Detective Gallagher, if need be. Thank you, Sergeant. If all parties could please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, Sergeant. You may proceed with the police report. Actually, Detective Hernandez, so we'll start with the first. Sorry, Detective Hernandez. Detective, you are muted. muted. Sorry about that. I want to read the supplemental report, which I wrote, and I think Sergeant Gallagher will pick up the other two. Um, on Monday, January 11th, 2021, at about 9.30 p.m., Sergeant Detective William Gallagher and Detective Eddie Hernandez, assigned mm -hmm. to the License Supremacy Unit, responded to the Hyatt Regency located at 1 Avenue de Lafayette to speak to staff regarding several incidents that occurred on the property. Specifically, detectives wanted to address an armed robbery that had occurred on August 11th, 2020, and a larceny that occurred uh, during a sex for fee incident on January 3rd, 2021. Detectives spoke to manager uh, Gilma Hernandez, who confirmed that she was aware of these incidents. Detectives also informed Ms. Hernandez that within the last six months, the Boston Police Department has responded to more than 150 calls for service and over 70 police reports are being generated. As a result of these incidents, Sergeant Detective Gallagher issued license premise inspection notice 005480 for armed robbery and prostitution on premises. Mr. Hernandez signed for and accepted the notice. That's, that's all in this report, Sarge. Uh, Sergeant Gallagher, uh, Boston Police. Oh, if, 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 if I may be heard, um, may I question Detective Hernandez uh, as the in the particular officer as the reports are written in just for Clarity? Certainly. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Detective Hernandez. Um, I, I noticed that uh, in your report, uh, your supplemental report, it basically indicates that you were there that day only to drop off a citation. Is that accurate? Correct, sir. Okay, did you conduct a licensed premises inspection on that day at all, other than delivering the citation? We reviewed the licenses, sir. Okay. And would it be fair to say that, in fact, you found nothing out of order when you reviewed the licenses? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Um, and in fact, uh, the uh, manager, Gilmar Hernandez, cooperated with you 
and was responsive to any request you may have had? Yes, sir. Okay. And she uh, signed for acceptance of the citation and did not resist or uh, talk back to you or otherwise evidence any uncooperative behavior or demeanor? No, sir. She was very pleasant and was very helpful. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Okay, Sergeant Detective Gallagher again, and I'll read those two reports into the record that were first mentioned in our uh, first report that Detective Nandis just read. They are written by other BPD officers. I have no direct knowledge of those, but the, the first one reads, was written by Officer Matthew Inwhistle, and it reads as follows. At about 11.50 a.m. on Tuesday, August 11th, 2020, Officers N. Whistle and Vasquez assigned the Alpha 102 responded to a radio call for an armed robbery at the Hyatt Regency, 1 Avenue de Lafayette, Boston. Prior to arrival, Channel 2 dispatch notified officers that the suspect was armed with a taser Objection. and still on scene. Objection. Move to strike, if I may be heard on the objection. Uh, Sergeant, you can continue. I'm just okay. going to read the report in. Thank you, ma'am. Well, I'm, I'm objecting to- Prior to arrival, if channel I may two be dispatch heard, notified that-, that office In fact, is this is an unlawful procedure because the detective uh, Gallagher very uh, clearly stated he has no personal knowledge. And that in We're fact- We're accepting the police reports as part of the record, Attorney Kelly, like we do at all of our hearings. Okay, I just, for the record, if you would note my objection. Attorney Kelly, your objection and any subsequent objections have been noted for the record. Sergeant Gallagher, please proceed. Yes, ma'am. Prior to arrival, Channel 2 dispatch notified officers that the suspect was armed with a taser and still on scene in room number 1403. Sergeant Whiteman, the Alpha 906, officers Drew and Chan in the Alpha 103, Officer Merricks in the Alpha 435, and Officer Giblin in the Alpha 437 responded to the scene. Upon arrival, officers were met by the victim, Joshua Cruz, date of birth 1187, who was sitting in the hotel lobby on the fifth floor. Cruz stated that he met a woman on Tinder, an online dating app around 7.30 p.m. Cruz stated that he was meeting with the suspect later identified as Selena Rivera, date of birth 11896, at the Hyatt Regency Hotel around 10.40 p.m. Cruz stated he arrived at the hotel where he was met by Rivera in the lobby on the sixth floor. Cruz stated that they made their way into his room, number 1403, where they engaged in conversation for roughly 30 minutes. Cruz stated Rivera pulled out a taser, placed it under his arm, and branded it. Cruz stated that he was not tasered, but it flashed and it scared him and he went through his pockets. Cruz stated that she took $140, mostly 20s from his left pocket. Cruz went down to the lobby, notified hotel security and called 911. Hotel security escorted officers to room number 1403 Officers knocked, identified themselves as Boston police officers. Rivera opened the door and stated, what's going on? Rivera stated that she did not know who the gentleman was downstairs. Rivera stated Cruz was knocking on her door for a while and she was going to call hotel security, but she did not know who he was. Rivera stated multiple times she had never seen Rivera also denied multiple times meeting him. It could be noted officers continued the investigation of the incident. Rivera became uncooperative. Rivera continued to FaceTime her husband throughout the investigation. Tramp was the name of the caller who Rivera continually attempted to call. It should also be noted that officers located a condom wrapper and unopened condom underneath the right pillow of her hotel room. Cruz stated that she was not from around here and was only staying one night. Due to the possibility of a weapon inside the hotel room, officers packed Chris Rivera in the luggage bag she was sitting next to. On the top layer of Rivera's luggage bag, officers located a pink Fempital taser 
inside the top layer of her luggage bag. Prior to locating the weapon, Rivera denied having any tasers or weapons inside the room. At this time, Ms. Rivera was placed in handcuffs and escorted to the Boston Police Mark Cruiser. Hotel security officer Melchor Alexius pulled video footage for Cruz and Rivera. Alexis stated Rivera checked into the hotel around 8.40 p.m. Office observed video footage of Cruz and Rivera meeting inside the elevator at 10.40 p.m. on the sixth floor. Footage revealed both parties giving each other a hug and continue on to the sixth floor. During booking offices located $680 in her property, multiple 20s and $100 bills, a pink Femme Fatale Teza seized and logged into evidence. Selena Vera was arrested and charged with armed um, robbery. Those essentially are the facts of the first police report. Objection, move to strike that statement. They aren't the facts until the commission makes findings of fact. The licensing board makes findings of fact. Your objection is noted. Okay, uh, shall I- may, may I inquire of Detective Gallagher in regards to the this report he just read at yes. this point? Sergeant Detective Gallagher, Attorney Kelly. Oh, I beg your pardon. I didn't read the complete title. My apologies. No problem, sir. So uh, I may inquire then. Sure, sir. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. So, uh, Detective Sergeant Gallagher, um, you just read a portion of the report that was filed by the officers who had actual knowledge of this event and responded to the hotel. I believe it was the entire report, sir. Well, in fact, isn't the entire report four pages long? I read the narrative section, sir. Okay. Um, but the report itself consists of four pages, isn't that right? That's correct. And do you have the full four pages in front of you? I do. Okay. And in fact, part of the report that these officers filed has a description of the location of the area of this offense. Isn't that true? If it's in the report, sir, it's true. Uh, move to strike that uh, as to one witness uh, who is not a recipient witness vouching for the credibility of recipient witnesses, which is highly improper. Attorney then Kelly, move to strike the answer. Your objections are noted. Please proceed with your questioning of the sergeant detective. Is that a ruling of the commission? May I take it? Your objection is noted. Is that a ruling of the commission? I take it. Yeah. Attorney Kelly, your objections go to uh, weight, not admissibility. Okay, no, my object, thank you. Just as long, I just wanna have a clear record, that's all, thank you. So, um, in fact, uh, Detective Sergeant Gallagher, the location of this offense was described as a private area, isn't that true? A hotel room, sir, yes. Yeah, and all, all this uh, uh, conduct in which the taser was brandished occurred inside a private guest room in the hotel. Isn't that true? That's true, sir. And there's no public right of access to a guest room that's hired by an individual. Isn't that true? Uh, there is, sir. There isn't. There's an exigent circumstance here and there's a right to investigate a crime. There's no warrant sir. needed. My, my question to you, Detective Sergeant, is there's no public right of access. Isn't that true? Public right, sir? Yes, that there, was my right. question to you, Detective Sergeant. Yes, Sergeant yeah, Detective, no I'm sorry. You have to be a, uh, a registered guest or an invitee. Sure. And as to uh, how did the police uh, get dispatched to this um, location on this date and time? I believe, sir, they were called. And in fact, doesn't the report say that the hotel security called the police? Uh, it, it looks like the victim called, sir. Okay. If you read the report. Okay. And when the police officers arrived at the scene, they were met with the hotel security staff. Isn't that true? That's correct, sir. And in fact, the hotel security staff fully cooperated with the officers who responded to the scene. Isn't that true? They did. And in fact, they led them right to room 1403. Isn't that true? That's correct. And in fact, you have personal knowledge that in fact, the sixth floor uh, area where the two participants to this transaction 
met originally is substantially different from the floor where room 1403 is located. Sir, I, I, I just read the police report into the record. Those questions would be to the other offices. So is it fair to say then that um, you haven't gone back to this hotel to look, compare the physical location of the sixth floor first? No, so floor we, we did not do that, sir. That was not our intention. Okay. And do you have any other individual knowledge as to the relative location of the sixth floor area versus room 1403? No, sir. Only what's in the police report. Okay. And... So uh, if in fact the report stated that hotel security called 911, you have no uh, person that speaks against that and would suggest that that's not true. Is that fair to say? Only what's in the police report, sir. Okay. And are you familiar with the uh, application referenced in this report that's known as Tinder? No, sir, I do not. Okay. The, um, so you're not aware it's a private communication between two individuals at a time? Never used it, sir. <laughs> oh, 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 I didn't, your experience as a professional investigator, detective, sergeant, detective. Right? Yeah, <clears throat> I've heard of it, sir. Uh, I know it's, it's a hookup dating app. Uh, that's okay. all I know about it. Okay. And uh, would it be fair to say that, uh, armed robbery is a specific intent felony that carries with it as punishment uh, a sentence in the state prison. That's correct. Sir. And in fact, the specific intent required for an armed robbery is required by just one person, the defendant. Isn't that true, sir, the Sergeant Detective? Sorry, sir, what, what was your question? The specific intent required to prove that it were charged the offense of armed robbery is required to be held by one person, and that is the defendant who is charged. Isn't that correct? You could have more than one defendant, sir. Yes. Yeah. And, but in this case, Sergeant Detective, there's only one person who got charged with armed robbery, isn't it? Yes, that's correct, sir. The victim... That was his intention when he called. He said a weapon was brandished and he was robbed. That meets the specifications of armed robbery under Mass General Law. And in fact, do you know what the status of the armed robbery prosecution against that individual is? I do not know, sir. And would it be fair to say that the individual who was charged with armed robbery was in fact arrested inside the hotel premises? That's correct, sir. That's how the report reads. And in fact, the arrest was secured with a full cooperation of the security staff of the hotel. Isn't that true? That's correct. Sir. And in fact, the hotel security staff also immediately gave access to the reporting police offices to the hotel's internal private video system. Isn't that right? That's correct. And in fact, you were able to capture screenshots in the course, not you, but the Boston police officers and the Boston Police Department were able to capture specific screenshots as a result of that cooperation and being provided with the security cameras from the hotel system. Yes, sir. Okay. And in fact, were any charges uh, brought against the, in, the male individual to this transaction? No, it does not say so, sir. He was a victim. And in fact, would it be fair to say that the Boston Police Department commonly charges par both parties to the transaction of sexual conduct for a fee? Sir, there's no mention of sexual conduct for a fee in this report. Okay. So, um, you and there was no follow-up investigation to determine if, in fact, that occurred here? No, sir. I think they just stopped at the arm robbery. They okay. stopped at the felony. Okay. And are you aware of any follow-up requests of the hotel as a result of this incident? I am not. Okay. I have no further questions. Thank you, uh, Sergeant Detective Gallagher. You're welcome. The, uh, the second report that I should be reading uh, was written by Officer Daniel Roca. 
and it reads as follows at about 7 20 m if i may i don't want to prolong this but uh, i understand the commission's the licensing board's ruling to note my objection to reading this report as well is that is that, is that correct yeah. okay okay thank you thank you for the clarity so once again at 7 21 on sunday january 3rd 2020 Officers Roca and Walton in the Alpha 102 responded to a radio call for a larceny at the Hyatt Regency located at 1 Avenue Lafayette, Boston. Upon arrival, officers spoke with William Shockey, victim who stated an unidentified female suspect, stole $4,000 from him. He stated that he went inside room 928, the room next to it with the suspect, Inside the room, the victim and the suspect began to engage in sexual activities, involved fellatio and other sexual acts. During the fellatio phase, the suspect did reach into the victim's pants pocket and retrieved $4,000 from him without the victim noticing it. The suspect then informed the victim that he was to have to leave the room due to the fact that she had another person coming in. Officers spoke with Eric Hopkins, who works at the hotel and showed officers video footage of the victim, the suspect, and two white males getting inside the hotel elevator at the same time. Victim informed officers the suspect was being escorted by the two white males wearing white t-shirts. He stated that he believed these two males were operating a white Hyundai, New York Reg, Golf Yankee Foxtrot 9986. Victim also showed the officer's text messages between himself and the suspect. The victim could not provide a name for the suspect, but stated that her phone number was 305-975-9215. He stated he paid the suspect via cash app, and her cash app account was Real Sex Bobby. Victim decided to disrupt the suspect as a tall white female with blonde hair. Officers also spoke to Alexia Alex, who works security at the hotel. He stated that about 5.42 a.m., he was approached by the victim, Shockey, who stated that he was in guest room staying at 9.28 or room 9.26, stole money from him. Alexis then escorted the victim to the ninth floor and knocked on both rooms. The guest inside both rooms refused to open the door at that time. While officers were unseen, officers observed the guests from 928 leave the hotel. They were a married couple and were upset about the incident and the misunderstanding. Next page, I'm sorry. Uh, excuse me, one second, there's a couple pages here. Not in order. Madam Chair, there is a page missing from this Boston Police incident report that I need to read into the record. I'm not sure if the Detective Hernandez has that, but it is not it's in my packet. Well. It, it, if, I, if I may, for the record, um, yeah. inquire as to how many pages Sergeant Detective Gala has in, in the report and which page of that is missing. That is page... We both I think that's it. It's three pages. Yeah, we just have that's three pages for it. Yeah. That's it. That's all right. It appears to end kind of abruptly, but that's it. Right. Okay. So we're not missing any, though. Not pages. missing anything. I'm sorry for that misunderstanding. Yeah. Okay. I no, thought there I was another want, page. Thank you. I wanted clarity. Be certain no I wasn't missing something. Thank you. May I inquire of uh, Sergeant Detective Gallagher? Go ahead, sir. The, um, so uh, once again, uh, Sergeant Detective, the, the report has a description of the physical area where this occurred, and it's described as a private area. Isn't that true? The hotel room, sir, yes. Yep. And all the activity occurred inside that private guest room. Isn't that true? It did. And in fact, you're familiar with text messaging, aren't you? Yes. And in fact, the messaging is a private communication outside of view of anyone from the public who isn't a party to the text messaging. Correct. Uh, and uh, in this regard, 
uh, when the officers responded to the hotel. Once again, they were met by hotel security. Isn't that true? It was. And in fact, hotel security cooperated immediately and fully with the responding Boston police officers. They did, sir. They helped in the investigation. And as a result of their help, they led the Boston Police Department right to the very room or rooms that may have been involved in the complaint that was filed by the individual. That's correct. Okay. And in fact, would it be fair to say, would you agree that the hotel itself, itself has already suffered uh, damage by irate, irate guests checking out of the hotel immediately when their door was knocked on in error? That's, well, sir, it's un, it, the report doesn't say if that's the reason they left or they were leaving because it was the end of their stay. That, well, that's in ambiguous. Fact, that, doesn't the report, det Sergeant Detective, say they were a married couple who were upset about the incident? Sir, we're reading into this. I believe the report kind of leaves it vague whether they were leaving and then were questioned or the reason they left was because of the question. That does not say. That's up to your interpretation. Okay. And you have no personal knowledge in, uh, about that, do you? I do not, sir. Okay. And you've, you made no further follow-up inquiry about that, did you? No, sir. So this is back in January, I believe. Mm-hmm. And uh, in fact, the male party to the transaction was not arrested or charged with committing the criminal offense of sexual conduct for a fee, was he? He was not, sir. In fact, it's a common practice of the Boston Police Department to charge both parties to that transaction, isn't it? No, sir. Boston Police commonly don't erect victims of crimes. Commonly. That's not my question, sir. My question is, is it not the common practice of the Boston Police Department to charge both males and the females involved in a transaction where it's identified that there's probable cause to believe that the crime of sexual conduct for a fee has been committed? Hello, hello, sir. If if we had both parties, that probably would have been the case. But uh, as the report states, there was only one party there, so, and the officers uh, were there to investigate the incident of an arm. Or, I'm sorry, not an arm robbery, but of a robbery. That was the main reason they were there. If both parties were there, that probably all that could have happened. But we're reading into this something that's not there. And if well, in fact, uh, Sergeant Detective, they had. Has the female involved in this transaction been identified to date? No, sir. Has the female, I, uh, so the female has not been arrested and the female has not been charged because you don't know who she is. That's correct. And are you aware of any investigation by any member of the Boston Police Department to identify that female? I'm sure the investigation is ongoing, sir. I'm not sure if they've wrapped it up yet, but as of right now, I have no further knowledge of that. Well, isn't it fair, isn't it true that this report gives a phone number for that person? I am sure, sir, the detectives have notes on this. I do not have those. Okay. He was not summoned for this hearing. Again, I just want to remind you that we're focused on the license premise um, report. This is not, we're not investigating the crime. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So um, here again, uh, the did the police? Do you have any information as to whether the police department requested video from the hotel? Uh, they did view the video, sir. I don't know if the detective has it on file. Okay, and they got that video from the security personnel for the hotel. Isn't that true? That's correct. So the report states that. And so it's fair to say that the hotel employees responded immediately and cooperatively and fully with the Boston police officers who responded to this incident. Yes, sir. They were a great help. Okay. Thank I have no further questions of Sergeant Detective Gallagher. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Attorney Kelly, if you would like to make a brief statement on behalf of your client, we will then move to questions from the chairwoman and commissioners. Sure. Um, well, uh, as I indicated, uh, with me today is the general manager and the license manager, who's one person of this particular property, uh, and he would like to uh, make a statement directly to the members of the commission in regards to this, 
and I would like to reserve some time for a closing or uh, before while the record is open. So without further ado, subject to your permission, uh, Madam Chair and members of the commission, I would like to turn the microphone over to Greg Namora. I believe he's been sworn. Just to be clear, board, not the licensing commission. Uh, I'm sorry? Just to be clear for the record, it's the Boston Licensing Board. Oh, I beg your pardon, yes. Uh, I lapse into uh, common labels. My apologies, I intended no disrespect. Okay, Greg, go ahead. Oh, is he muted or with a bad connection? Yeah, it must be a bad connection. Greg, you're coming in with a scramble. You want to try calling in, Greg? Greg, we're, we're, we're not hearing anything you're saying. Let's get him the direct phone number. Greg, do you have the phone number for the hearing? Could someone of my staff put that um, in the chat? I have it. I'll. I'll... So, Greg, when you call in, you might want to mute your computer and then use your telephone for audio. He's going. Mr. Kelly, do you know if did he disconnect? Um, I believe that he did. I'm texting him the call in numbers from the uh, licensing okay. board's notice but my fat thumbs slow me down. Good afternoon. Can you hear me now? I'm so sorry. Yes. Well. Excellent. Thank you so much. If if I may, and I do not know what the uh, issue is in regards to my computer, but if I may read the statement, I would be very grateful. Yes. So Go myself ahead. as general manager, thank you so much. Um, myself as general manager of Hyatt Regency Boston, on behalf of myself and our colleagues, we appreciate this opportunity to express our long lasting commitment to Boston, to the city, to, and we look forward to collaborating and further building our partnership with our communities. The hotel is working with leaders of Boston Police District A1, the detectives overseeing our hotel, as well as other agents of the local authorities to ensure we are working together now and in the future for a more secure and safe environment. I would like you to know we do not merely wait for contact from city officials, then react and respond. In our efforts to further strengthen the security and safety measures of the hotel, we have proactively made changes in our operation. Um, this January 2021, while other hotels during the pandemic may choose to reduce security staff, we added to our security staff by deploying a second overnight security officer seven days a week. Along with colleagues who work on guest floors, security conducts multiple rounds of the hotel, and we added the requirement of rounds conducted by our management team, including guest floor walkthroughs top to bottom on a daily basis. As a Hyatt standard, we conduct wellness checks on all guest rooms not serviced by housekeeping that day to check specifically for the safety of our guests. Our director of security for the past three plus years recently accepted a job to work at the Suffolk County House of Correction. That required us to hire our new director of security. Mr. Chris Robinson has 27 years of experience in the Boston area, working the past five years in security management for Sheraton Boston. 
Every guest checking into the hotel is issued a welcome letter highlighting additional safety and security requirements for our property. We confirm that no more than four people are allowed in a guest room. Smoking is not allowed. Parties are not allowed. And for those not following policies of the hotel, it will result in potential eviction from the property. We've increased the minimum age for a guest to check in and register from 18 years old to 21 years old. As part of Hyatt's continued commitment to training, all hotel colleagues have completed the company's human trafficking courses in Q4 of 2020. And in this current year, ongoing training continues to ensure everyone is aware of updates and policies, procedures, as well as, of course, when colleagues return to the workplace. In accordance with our guidelines, general practice, we check and confirm guest government ID upon time of arrival as a key point of the check-in process. Moving forward to best partner with the Boston Police and create an even better security presence in the hotel, we will continue to request police details for the property. We do look forward to continuing our efforts to work with you and other local authorities as we have in the past to offer our hotel to be used for educational operations, for example, stings or compliance checks. More importantly, we look to initiate such opportunities versus perhaps waiting to be contacted to do so. I appreciate the importance to share and provide security information among hotels, and our security director has actually reached out and will continue to reach out to meet and discuss joint opportunities with other directors in this area, including, and for example, regularly scheduled meetings or briefings on a monthly or quarterly basis. Um, this would create an opportunity for those on this call and this meeting to have security updates and briefings um, from yourselves and the BPD. Moving forward, we will continue to find ways to improve the overall safety and security of our property to remain in good standing with the Boston Police Department as well as yourselves and other representatives. Um, please feel free to reach out to me personally at any time so we may work together to support the safe and secure operations of a vital property in this world-class city of Boston. I thank you for your time. And for, for the record, if I may, just uh, to add to uh, more, more current events uh, for the attention of the commission for the record, uh, it's my more understanding. Current? I'm sorry. Are you talking about more current events? Oh no! Uh, yeah, the, just to supplement um, Greg's statement to the board. Very recently, they had uh, that Friday afternoon, and I can uh, I'll let Greg jump in if I misspeak. They did, in fact, have a very beneficial meeting with the district captain and other representatives of the Boston Police Department. That was Friday afternoon. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes, oh, okay. if you'd like, let me get to the questions. Thank you very much. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. I thought we were at the statement, statement phase. I beg your pardon. I, I just want to talk about the, these two incidents and then you can let, we can move on with the hearing, okay? It's very good. Leslie? Oh, sorry. Uh, Attorney Kelly, did you have anything else about these two incidents or can uh, the chairwoman and the commissioners ask questions of the licensee? No, but by all means, um, I, I defer to the commission to ask questions as you please. The commission is Thank to you. ask questions as you please. Thank you. Uh, Greg, thank you for joining us today and thank you for your statement. Um, I believe your attorney or you were present on yesterday's hotel uh, call by the licensing board. We certainly were, yes. Okay, and that's what I was trying to get at, Attorney Kelly. Um, I have a question for you, Greg. Were you present or working um, at, during either of these inc incidents? That I was not. Okay, did the person or someone who was working that night have direct access to your cell phone? Most definitely. Okay, and how many security guards were working that night? It would have been one or two, respectively. It would have been uh, one in August and it would have been two in January. Do you remember in August how many rooms were rented on this particular night? I honestly cannot tell you. Okay. I'm so sorry. Do you sorry. know what the cost of renting a room was in August? 
um, I can give a general idea of sitting in about the mid, I would say about 140, 150 in that general range, I would say. Okay. It would and be specific the to the respect. What's that? It would be specific to the actual day of um, what we've looked at. Have you guys reduced your rents, your rates considerably since COVID? Compared to prior to the pandemic, yes, we have. Okay. And what would the rent? What would the rate have been approximately in January? In January of this year, I would say it would be in the same area, probably around the one ten area. Which, again, being a slow season compared to previous years, January, February is the slowest and lowest rated time periods for our hotel. Pre-COVID, in August, would one security guard be the normal number of security guards that would be working? Yes, we have kept that the same. Okay, I just want to remind you, and I think your attorney can tell you this too, you can't rely on, on Boston police details to, to supplement your security. It's, it's uh, up to you as the manager of this licensed premise to um, take full responsibility to, for proper um, security. Oh, most certainly. And I think that's the probably a conversation we've been having with this. Yes, I you completely stated. understand. The detail is in addition to um, the staffing that we yeah. have. Okay. And when these re rooms were rented both in August and January, did you get proper identification from the person renting the room? Did you require I am confident that we did, yes. Yeah, Correct, sure. that is our stand. Okay. And how would you track your patrons when they come and go? Um, I'm not really, we, we have cameras that would allow us to see from elevators, from the entranceway of the hotel, um, that would be visible. And wants to go up to the sixth floor lobby, do they have to stop at the front desk and say, geez, I'm going to visit somebody in room 1408, or can they just go right to the sixth floor lobby without stopping at the front desk? Oh, I'm sorry, to actually, to have access to go upstairs, you do need a key to tap onto the elevator itself to go upstairs. Okay. Okay. And um, how was your staff notified about um, the, the incident in August and the incident in January? I believe in both instances, it was brought to our attention and we in turn contacted for follow-up. Brought to your attention by who? Boston Police? By the guest. Yes, I believe the second one was brought to the attention by the police. The first one was brought to the attention by the guest. And in turn, we ensured that the police were called to advise them of what happened. Okay. I have no questions. Commissioner Curran, do you? Hello. Yeah, I do have a couple questions. Um, with regard to the later incident i'm sorry i'm just scrolling through uh the reports here uh january 3rd yes uh it says that the victim approached your security at about 6 42 a.m is that correct i i was under the impression that um this per it was at the same time as BPD was on site. Okay. So as I was reading the report, as I'm reading the report, it says that, um, Mr. Uh, Alexis, correct? Yes. Uh, stated that at about 6 42 AM, he was approached by the victim who stated that he, you know, carry on, he had been robbed, right? That is what it says. Yes. Okay. What I want to know is what other details did Mr. Alexis get at that moment from the victim? To be honest, I cannot speak on behalf of our officer at that time. I do not know what additional information. You don't that he know received. whether they inquired what the relationship was between the victim and the person in that room. I do not know if he asked that question. I do know that if there was such so a concern. Asked, do you know if he asked any questions beyond taking the information from the victim? 
I cannot speak on his behalf. I'm so sorry. Okay, so the report goes on to state that Mr. Alexis escorted the victim to the ninth floor, correct? Yes. He didn't call the police at that time, correct? From this report, I do not see that, no. Do you have any reason to believe that he called the police before he escorted the victim back to the ninth uh, floor? The timing of it, I do not know because the police did come and I am trying to best understand the timing of that. Best information I have is that uh, Mr. Alexis was told at 642. And then the next time stamp I have is at about 721, uh, police are dispatched. I, that is what it says, yes. Okay, so your staff decided upon hearing a report of a robbery to bring the victim back up to the room and check on it themselves before calling the Boston police? Well, if, if I may, for, for a clear record. You, you may you may not. I'm going to have, ask, ask him to answer the question. Well, I, I believe I have to object for the record that if we're talking about the January 3rd report, um, it does, it, it's for a larceny. <clears throat> Okay. And it's not a robbery at all on January 3rd. Attorney Kelly, your objections noted. Commissioner Curran, you can please again ask the licensee. So, I'm sorry, sir, I, I don't have your name. It's not... Um... Greg. Uh, my name is Greg. Okay, uh, sir, can, uh, can you confirm that your staff waited sometime between 642 and sometime close to the 721 before they called the Boston police? Reviewing this report, I would say that that is the case. I would also refer and speak once again with our officer regarding this to confirm. Okay, well, I mean, that's it's kind of, you're kind of parsing here. I mean, what I really want to know is why that would be the case. I do not know the difference of why that time span is there. Well, so do, do you dispute that as the, as I read the report, I, I read the report as being your employee was taking it upon himself to address this situation without the help of the Boston police prior to being unsuccessful, it seems, and then calling the Boston police. That could be the case, yes. Well, sir, Madam. what I'm telling you is that's how I'm reading it. So do you have anything to, to say about that reading? No, I do not. Okay, thank you. I have nothing else. Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions for the licensee? Just one, I just need to confirm, did you do an internal investigation after either one of these incidences? So did you talk or interview your staff, housekeeping, guest services, security? In regards to both instances, it was security that we had spoken to and compiled uh, incident reports. In regards to the latter, it was actually Boston PD who came in to speak specifically with our director at the time to have additional follow-up. There was no housekeeping involvement during this time because of the times that these individuals were here. So just as a, as a um, you want to be able to train your staff properly. So I think interviewing your staff to figure out what was, what was their impression of the guests as they were going through the hotel and getting on the elevator, you wanna be able to know what they understood of the of their transaction or their relationship between these guests so that you can so that this kind of incident won't happen again so i would suggest you do a thorough internal investigation um, and retrain most certainly we are once again working with our partners at the bpd and various types of training that we can do together to ensure that everything is addressed Thank you. Attorney Kelly, would you like to make your closing argument, please? Yes. Uh, the um, facts in the record 
I respectfully submit, do not support any finding that the license holder itself affirmatively committed any illegal act. In fact, the citation that was delivered in the reference in the reports makes allegations in regards to a specific intent felony of armed robbery and also the specific uh, criminal action of prostitution on the premises. It is noteworthy that the citation states both, the, both alleged violations occurred on a single date, August the 12th of 2020. And that citation is dated as being issued almost four months later, January the 11th. I submit further that there's no facts in the record to support a finding that the license holder failed to act where action was required. To the contrary, the reports and the uh, the Sergeant De Detective Gallagher confirmed that in fact, the licensee's response was always cooperative, was always immediate and full cooperation that in fact was uh, very helpful to the arrest of a, the felon being charged with, the accused felon being charged with armed robbery. They got, had access to the security cameras. They were given copies if they wanted them uh, based upon the testimony that's in the record. And while there are no facts in the record to support that the license holder failed to act where action is required, in fact, the evidence shows that as a direct substantial and proximate result of a bad individual decision by a hotel guest, the license holder acted to maintain and continue to protect the safety and security of all the guests in the premises. And specifically, in regards to the August 11th, 20 incident, it's clear and undisputed that all the criminal conduct or the conduct that gave rise to the, rise to the criminal allegations occurred in a private area, a guest room. There is no evidence in the record today that in fact, any action occurred in a public observable place, there was no public observable action. And as the expression goes, secret lovers are just that, secret. The male guest who's the party to the transaction went to hotel security and when, once they went public and came out of the secrecy for the first time, the evidence before you is the hotel security acted right away. And indeed with a report of a weapon being used, it's the hotel that called 911 and got the police involved and not try to handle it themselves. Hotel security upon their arrival escorted the Boston Police Department upon their arrival to the particular room involved, which was floors distinct from the area of the first meeting. And in fact, we have uh, the female who was identified, who was arrested with the substantial assistance of the whole hotel security. In regards to the January 3rd incident, we have similar facts. All the conduct that gave rise to the criminal allegations occurred in a private area, a guest room, with no evidence in the record today of any activity taking place in a public area where it is observable by the licensee or its employees. And once again, until one of the parties to the secret transaction went public, it was unknown and undiscoverable. But once the information was given, and they came, once again, once they stepped into the public light, hotel security acted and cooperated with follow-up and support of the Boston police officers who responded to the scene. I respectfully submit to the licensing board members that an individual bad decision by a guest is not proof and does not support a conclusion that in fact there was a compliance failure by the license holder. And in fact, no law supports the conclusion that the license holder here in either of these two cases committed any violation. And I believe that the longstanding precedent of the Saxon Coffee Shop case supports that position fully. 
With that, I su submit respectfully that there is no record to find that any violation occurred and no record of evidence on which to base any sanction of a license suspension. But going a step further, you heard from the license manager that in fact, this property remains committed to continuing and bettering the cooperative supportive relationship they have with the Boston police officer at the district level with the licensing agents and indeed with the members of the licensing board as well. That is, I think you can tell from his appearance, from his tenor, from his, from his demeanor, sincere, and the statement of a responsible, committed businessman who wants to get through this unprecedented environment that, that we are all dealing with. I thank you for your time and the opportunity to speak to you today. And if you have any questions of me, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, the board will take this matter. Calling Tom English's Cottage Inc. Doing business is Tom English's Cottage. is Tom English's Tavern located at 112 to 118 Emerson Street. The date of the incident was January 21st, 2021. Employees on premise drinking alcohol after 10 p.m. mandated gov closing in violation of governor's executive order and Mass General Law Chapter 138, Section 64. Is there anyone present on behalf of the licensee? Good afternoon. Uh, Madam Commissioner, members of the board, Kurt Bletzer representing Tom English's pub. With me is Mike Neff, one of the managers of the establishment. Thank you. Who from the Boston Police Department will be testifying? I will be. Hector Fernandez, are there any other individuals with personal knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify? Sergeant Detective Gallagher, if need be. Thank you. Could all parties please raise your right hand? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. I do. Thank you. Detective Fernandez, you may proceed with the police report. Good afternoon. I'll be reading from a police report, which I wrote on uh, Thursday, January 21st, 2021, at about 10.55 p.m. Sean Detective Gallagher and Detective Eddie Hernandez assigned to the license premise unit were performing bar checks of uh, restaurants during the COVID-19 emergency while walking up to the front door of Tom English's cottage located at a 12 through 118, 112 through 118 Emerson Street. Detectives noticed three persons standing at the bar. One of the persons was observed pouring what appeared to be a glass of beer. As detectives walked inside and approached the bar area, they noticed that it was uh, two glasses of beer. Detectives reiterated the importance of the governor's COVID guidelines and Boston's licensing board advisory on the current prohibition of on-premise consumption of alcohol after the mandatory 10 p.m. closing. As a result of what detectives observed, trying to attack the Gallagher issued license premise inspection notice 024098. This was notice was from employees observed drinking alcohol on premise after mandatory 10 p.m. closing. Person in charge, Ms. Leah Musi, signed for an accepted notice. That's all. <clears throat> Attorney Blitzer, would you like to make a statement before questions from the chairwoman and commissioners? Uh, if I could just ask uh, Detective Hernandez a couple of questions, please. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, mm -hmm. Detective. Uh, when you came to the door, the staff let you in when you guys knocked on the door, is that correct? Yes, sir. And they were polite and cooperative with you at that time? Yes, sir. And in fact, um, they the beer that was poured, you actually saw there were two beers, not one beer, correct? Correct. And those beers were in the tap uh, being poured from the, uh, from the beer taps? Yes, sir. And there were no other drinks or glasses on the table or beers on the table, correct? No, sir. And you never saw anyone drinking those beers. You just saw them being poured from the taps, correct? That's correct, sir. And when you came in the door, they didn't try to pour those beers away or hide the fact that they were pouring that beer, correct? No, sir. Okay. I have nothing further about uh, Detective Hernandez. Thank you. If I may. Sure, but please Thank go ahead. You. Thank you. So uh, um, that main question was a uh, usual night. Uh, everybody had been out of the premises on time. The three employees were there cleaning up. They do a lot of different cleaning now with the COVID violations and the new COVID rules and regs. And they were actually in the process of bleeding taps. They had set taps up. They had re, uh, reset the taps in the basement and were upstairs pouring beer into cups to bleed the taps and were pouring that beer down the drain after they had poured them in the tap. 
They were not sitting in there drinking. Um, they were trying to make sure they get the place clean and ready for ready for the next day. They had uh, been still in the process of cleaning and stocking the beer kegs and the beer tap. Um, they take uh, great pride in, in, in notice, and they've had they've had some issues in the past, and they're very careful to make sure they don't uh, they don't fall into that again. So they were uh, making sure that they were prepared and ready to go for the next day, but they were not in there drinking. They were in there actually just trying to clean up and be ready for the next day. Okay. Hey, Woman Joyce, do you have any questions for the licensee? I just want to confirm that the three people there, were they patrons or were they all staff? They were all staff. Okay. I have they're, no they're all staff, the bartender and uh, door, two door guys, two door staff. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Curran, Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions for the licensee? I know, thanks. Thank you, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you, have a nice day everybody. Thank you. Calling Cafe Paradiso Inc, doing business as Cafe Paradiso located at 255 Hanover Street. The date of the notice is January 19th, 2021. This is a mandatory informational hearing regarding ownership, beneficial interest in the licensee entity. The manager of record of the licensee at entity oversight and control of the day-to-day -day operations of the licensee entity and the execution and filing of the annual renewal application for the licensee entity in violation of mass general law chapter 138 sections 15a chapter 138 section 16a 22 26 and 64. is the licensee present yes good, good afternoon uh, william Perot on behalf of the licensee uh, adrian stefano is also present he's the Attorney Perullo, we uh, we can't hear you. You're very uh, you're very quiet. Hold on one second. Is that any better now? Any no, better? you're very faint. It's not, just looks like maybe the volume is turned down. I'm sorry. Let me just wait. Technology mind of mine. Give me give me one second to see if I can get this up. And for the record, this is an informational hearing, so no parties need to be sworn in. I'll, I'm going to hold this close up. Does that help? That's better. That's good. Okay. Yep. Let's. I'll figure out the volume later. Um, <laughs> let me uh, try to shed uh, some light on the situation. There's there's a couple of uh, problems that we have to get cured uh, with regard to this business that's been licensed at this premises since uh, 1977. Uh, the Stefano family has. Uh, operated this and in the past operated a number of other uh, cafes, uh, uh, both in Boston, Lowell, Cambridge, et cetera. Uh, the situation we have ourselves in is twofold. So let me address them one at a time. Uh, your records indicate that the corporate name of this business is uh, Cafe Paradiso Inc. The corporation that has uh, uh, conducted the business, paid taxes, et cetera, for years, uh, is listed with the Secretary of State's office as Cafe Paradiso 2, Inc., II, Inc. Uh, in the past, there have been uh, several other Cafe Paradiso entities that were in existence and then eventually uh, involuntarily dissolved. So uh, the only existing one right now is the Cafe Paradiso 2, Inc. Uh, the cure to that will be that we will file a corporate name change, meanwhile maintaining uh, our federal ID number and our tax accounts and so on and so forth. Uh, but in order to do that, that gets us to our second problem. Um, and the second problem is that uh, the corporation uh, needs to have uh, changes of uh, shareholders, officers, and directors filed with you uh, and the ABCC. Uh, this is a result of uh, the death of uh, Mr. Stefano's brother, Oscar, uh, and the death of his mother, uh, um, his mother, their mother, I should say. Uh, Adrian's mother passed uh, a couple of years ago, uh, who was the 100% shareholder at the time of her death. And that estate uh, was filed in uh, November of last year with the uh, Middlesex Probate Court. They have not yet issued 
uh, an appointment of her as the administratrix of the estate uh, so that she can now act as the official uh, authority in order to change the corporation and to file these farms with you. I know that all sounds crazy, but uh, time has gone by. And as I said, it's uh, been, been something that uh, Adrian has been involved with all of her life uh, as part of the family. Uh, the second part of that is that the manager uh, who had been listed and had been uh, the manager of record for a number of years, whose name I won't uh, attempt to uh, pronounce for the moment, um, also passed. And uh, he will be replaced uh, with the new manager, which will either be Adrian or one of her nieces who uh, will be coming into the business with her. So uh, when we cured this, uh, Adrian and two of her nieces will be shareholders, officers and directors and uh, general manager of the premises. Um, as I said, I would like to file them yesterday, but until in fact she's appointed, uh, we don't have the due authority to file any of the paperwork with either you or the secretary of state. So the, the answer is we're prepared to do that. Um, I have the, the necessary information. Uh, I simply can't punch the buttons uh, un until I uh, receive that back. I am not doing the estate. Uh, the attorney doing that is uh, Peter Mullane, uh, who is a Cambridge-based attorney that's been a family attorney for the Stephanos for as long as I can remember. Um, and uh, he's been frustrated by the fact that uh, since November, he's had communication uh, with the probate court, but uh, you know they've requested additional materials from them, but they have not issued the appointment yet. So uh, as soon as that happens, which he thinks could happen at any day, uh, we will start filing with the Secretary of State and then eventually file with you. Thank you. I'm that. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Kerr and Commissioner Saxon? I don't. Attorney Perillo, just keep us updated. We know that you've been submitting the documentation. Obviously, we just want to make sure this gets cleaned up long in advance of renewal seasons next year. No, absolutely. It, it has to be done for any number of reasons. It's just, uh, as I say, I can't get the process going until uh, mm -hmm. I have her appointed with authority. Understood. Thank you very much. The board has no questions. We'll take this matter under advisement. Those are all of the items on the agenda today. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.